But that first step is you have to design a business model that is desirable. When I initially moved back to Pensacola, I had a meeting with Lloyd. Lloyd invited me for breakfast and I was telling him, man, I still have an idea for the entertainment industry. This is what I wanted to do. He was like, all right, I got started up on the blocks. So you, I need you to start coming to start up on the blocks and get a little more information on how to work through the tech ecosystem and uh, take your idea and we'll get you where you need to go. My company is called The Know is an app that is streamlining business for the entertainment industry. Yeah, so if you're a musician, what you would do is pretty much jump on the platform, you'll create a profile, but the way we created the profile is pretty much a cleaner way. So now if they want more information about you, you'll connect your social media platforms, your streaming platforms, and that way they can go directly to it. What we also have included is your calendar. So pretty much you can set your days, you can set your price for your days and automate your booking. So initially talking to Lloyd, my idea was all here, it was there, it was over here, it was over there. It was like, all right, Quinn, I get it. <laughs> You got a lot that you want to do, but we need you to bring it in just a little bit and then work on your pitch, your story, and how you're going to bring it full circle to get people to understand what you're trying to create. Most of the programs here wasn't inclusive. And so we said we'll focus on helping founders of color. We also start at the beginning of the thing, at the idea stage, whereas a lot of the programs you see here locally, they start after you're up and, and that's not very efficient unless you have if you don't have a lot of money you can't recover from your mistakes and the lean startup system it actually helps you make mistakes faster before you spend a lot of money you don't actually start building anything until you got customer buy-in there was a need for small businesses to bring brand awareness to their business i see there's a lot of makers and bakers that they're making all of these goodies and these products but they can't market it they can't sell it at the same time and there needs to be kind of that middle man, that middle person to help bring economic growth to some of the small businesses in Pensacola. So Taste of Pensacola I came up with that idea during the pandemic when I saw things at that time that Amazon wasn't couldn't fulfill. They didn't even have those products but the local people in the community they did. And so there was a ton of people coming out saying hey I make masks. I'm like wow this is amazing all the local people here that are just as talented that can actually make those products. And so I wanted to kind of showcase who they were. So with Taste of Pensacola, our income streams, we have several of them. We have the corporate America. We do corporate gifting, just regular consumers, different Pensacola natives that don't live here that want to purchase our boxes, like a Taste of Weddings distribution. So we also do bulk sales. So for a private airline, if they want some local snacks and goodies on their passenger flights, they will come to Taste of Pensacola and we will source their vendors here locally and we'll give a small business owner an opportunity to have reoccurring monthly sales. I've always had a really big vision for Taste of Pensacola. I knew that it could go beyond just local. I know that maybe other communities could possibly use the same platform that I'm trying to build. And I always have these big visions, but I never know how to even get there. Where do I start? I know it's more than, there's a lot of technical things behind it. I know there's a lot of research, but that connection, I never had it until thankfully you know, I met and was introduced to Startups on the Blocks and was able to just learn more about how to grow it in terms of data. Things I just never thought about, different framework, words like traction. Huh? There's a lot of things that I just did not know about and, and language that I need to know in order to get funding for my business. There's just a lot that I didn't know. When I would go to the stores and look online, they didn't have a wide variety of natural hair products for about eight years ago. And the ones that they did have, the ingredients, it would say that they were all natural. And when I would research the ingredients, a lot of the ingredients were not natural. I make everything, my shampoo, conditioner, I have an oil that I make, and I have two different separate butters. Like I had some people who were completely bald and grew their hair. Just, it's about giving women their confidence back in their hair. I have this salon and I have a second salon and I have my products in about five beauty supply stores. So I need a manufacturer to keep up with the demand at this point. Start Up on the Blocks has helped my business grow. Send me to different people. I'm able to do different pitch competitions to apply for grants in the community for small businesses. Lloyd's a really good person to connect with. He has a lot of resources here in the community that can help small businesses grow. If you have a product out there and you're trying to go big time, he's the person that you would want to meet with. 
So it's really important to have some type of support because nine times out of 10, most founders start out on their own. And to have somebody that has an idea of how the ecosystem works and is able to tap into other resources and bring back to the community, and that pretty much has encountered some of the roadblocks or going through the same roadblocks that we're currently going through and understands where you're at, your culture and how you respond to things is a big help because you don't really have too many people to have access to what we have access to here in the community. And a lot of people believe that you have to leave and go to bigger cities to do the things that we're doing here. But I mean, it's one thing to have exposure, but you have to actually know it's here in the community in order to take advantage of the resources. So I get approached and I talk to friends all the time that wants to either start an idea or hear that I'm actually doing the app and wants to know more information about how are you doing it or what's the process, what's the path. I'm like, man, we have somebody here, start up on the blocks, Laura Richard. And Lloyd is here, he's a great resource to the community and to founders that's trying to learn the ecosystem. So join Startup on the Blocks. Startup ecosystem. Hey, hey, how are you, Robert? I am doing absolutely fabulous, Lloyd. How are you? I'm great, great too. I like your energy there. Welcome to Startup on the Blocks. <laughs> thank you very much. Glad to be a part of Startup on the Blocks and thank you very much for having me. Yes, and I appreciate you being here. We're looking forward to hearing your chat. But first, we want to, um, you know, um, give thanks to our sponsors. And they've been a big help, you know, over the past two and a half years. This um, August will be our third year. And so, um, yes, a big thing this year, we expanded uh, and partnered with Blacks and Technology Foundation. So we're literally offering our our training programs to all of their members and uh, uh, Florida Power and Light, they're uh, continue to try to help us grow, you know, with the uh, training programs and trying to reach more founders out there. Uh, Pensacola Chamber, the Gulf Coast Minority Chamber, yeah, and local small business development center, that they, they've all been a big, great partners along with Colab. Colab, you know, uh, that's a big resource here in Pensacola for for um, uh, founders, and so that we're glad to have them as a partner. And a couple of banks, um, the Renaissance Bank and the First Bank, they they both came on board and been helping us with the sponsorship of the program. Uh, and it's free. Um, they sponsored, I think, about three or about pitch competitions, and the first uh, sponsored one as well. And so we're also kicking off a uh, uh, Pensacola chapter of Blacks in Technology. And so we're going to be rocking and rolling, uh, getting nice. folks connected to all these great resources out there. Nice. Nice. That sounds great. Yeah. So we're definitely going to continue to try to get more partners to help us grow resources so we can actually get more uh, founders trained on the best practices for, for building a, a, a startup. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Robert, you're here tonight, and and um, next week we got Crystal Logan. She's actually a, a Blacks in Technology member, and she's okay. she's yeah she's working on a, a, a creating a video game that's Afrocentric. You know, using Africa as the backdrop as opposed to some of these. Um, oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so that's going to be really, really great. We're looking forward to having uh, her on. So why don't you get, give us a quick introduction of, about about yourself? Yeah, sure. Matter of fact, I do have something I can share with you. Okay, go right ahead. Um, so so you all can know who you're talking with. Uh, let me get it up here real quick. And okay. when I get it up, just let me know that you can see my screen. And we'll do, we'll do. Out. Now, can you see my screen? Sure, sure. Okay, awesome. Well, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Robert McNair. Um, again, thank you, Lloyd, for having me. Uh, I am a Microsoft technical trainer with Microsoft and I'm also a public speaker as well. And I do a lot of public speaking all around the world based off of different technologies and such. What you see right here is kind of like a little bit about me. I'm located in Atlanta, Georgia. We don't call it Hotlanta, everybody else does. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yes, I am here in Atlanta, Georgia. About 10, 11 years ago, I developed an app uh, with over 100,000 downloads in the wow, island. I know that. Um, and it was a phenomenal time. It happened in about a six-month span. It was crazy. 
But um, it was really something that, you know, I really had gotten dug into. I've been a part in IT for a long time, but that was my first um, uh, my first time really with development and things of that nature. I got about eight. Uh, legacy certs, MCP, MCE, MCSE, a lot of the older ones. And uh, I'm also a lover of music as well. I'm a lover of music so much that my wife doesn't like when I put my playlist on random because <laughs> it's all over the place there. So she's like, stick with the genre, right? Okay. So, um, <laughs> but uh, the next thing I'm always asked everywhere I go is, am I related to Ronald McNair, the astronaut? And the answer to that is he was a distant cousin of mine. I didn't even okay. know that we were related when the uh, Challenger explosion happened, right? But then the next thing people seem to easily move on to is if I'm related to Steve <laughs> McNair, the uh, the NFL quarterback. And the actual answer to that is yes, that was my cousin on my my second cousin on my dad's side. Great years with Alcorn State, uh, Baltimore Ravens, two yards short from winning the Super Bowl, right? Just wow. <laughs> man, right. So just some great times. I got a lot of certs down there that I've just uh, amassed over the last few years. Um, and uh, But the thing that I'm kind of really most proud of is that uh, I'm a second generation IT kid. My dad actually worked on the barcodes in the 1960s, right? So he's some, somewhat of a hidden figure. You can't open up a history book and find things about him. I can go to his house and I can find and look at the documentation, but y'all know how that went years ago. <laughs> I don't even have to explain yeah, that. Yeah. But that makes me a second generation IT professional. We hope to pass it on to my son. And you see that picture down there in the middle. That yes. is my, that's in 1984. Right. Okay. Uh, that is a Commodore 64 that he's sitting at with the line printer. And he would like spend all night. I would hear the printer going off and he would spend all night printing out his lines of code and going through all these different things. And he had it plugged up to that black and white TV. Right. They didn't have monitors back then. Yeah. And we would take that TV when he wasn't working and we would stick it sometimes in the family room or other areas and watch TV. Remember when we used to have, to have the knobs? Yeah. Two to three to five, yeah, those exactly. types of things. It was one of those. So <laughs> that's really me in a nutshell. Um, I love tech. I love talking. I love uh, teaching and training. So thank you once again for having me. Yes. Uh, thanks for, for, for sharing, for sharing that. Yes. Okay. So uh, we'll just take a couple of minutes here to talk about um, uh, start up on the blocks a little bit. So if we got anybody doing the audience, they can kind of get a feel for what our programs are, are all about. And, and and so one of the first things in being a, a founder is developing that right um, mindset. And, uh, and then uh, if you get the right mindset and, and, and develop the skills and the best practices, you can unlock the resources in the ecosystem. I, you know, I use uh, Microsoft as a good example of resources that are in the ecosystem because the, the Microsoft startup program, it actually, uh, you know, I guess either last year, or I don't remember exactly when you all switched up, it, so it's, it broke the startup program into phases. So like at the idea phase, they got some benefits for you. At the concept stage, they got some benefits for you. When you get building your MD, they got some MP, MVP, they got some benefits for you. And, um, and then on when you're trying to grow. And so, um, but the key thing is you have to learn the language of the ecosystem and have the right mindset to kind of kind of move forward and unlock the, all the great great things. Did, did you know Microsoft at the idea stage, they would actually pay to incorporate your company in Delaware? I had no idea about that. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's one of the benefits, <laughs> you know, of being, of being, uh, and they do it through one of you all's partners, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's the significance of the kind of startup ecosystem there. And <laughs> The, uh, the we created a little playbook back when we first got started. We didn't have all the resources we we have have now, and so we we say this is the playbook you should you should follow. And uh, today I shared a a uh, post and startup on the box about how to build an MVP, and it was from the the the, uh, the gentleman that's I guess I don't know if he's still running. Um, Y Combinator, but he he he's uh, he's been you know been with them quite a while, and he's talking to you about how to build an MVP. 
I'll put the link uh, in a little later, but I think every founder should listen to that because it's, it's got some really good gems in it about, you know, um, you know, starting off and building an MVP. So, yes, uh, I can talk about this kind of stuff forever, but I will just speed right along here. Um, so our main platform that we use for training is called the Lean Stack platform. And, and so what we're doing with Blacks and technology right now, we're offering 30 day cohorts of this uh, uh, foundations and business models design training. And so uh, that um, is where you uh, can learn how to pitch your idea clearly and concisely. And then you can bring in all the stakeholders and get in, start getting into some of the programs. Um, and then after that, we have a 90 day accelerator where we can take you through some of this stuff right, right, right here. But basically it's good for a founder to know their, know their journey in the phases that you, that they go through. And that's kind of one way we use this chart. It's got a lot of other great information in it, but that's, uh, you just have to kind of get curious about it. It's basically a, 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 a growth curve, you know, as, as, as you go from your idea, trying to get to your goal and, in three years. And this area right here is the, where you reach product market fit. And down here, you're trying to uh, uh, get the problem solution fit, which is actually a, a great milestone to, to actually meet. This is another way to look at that, that the life cycle of a startup founder. Start off with a vision and you're in with an exit. And so we this chart is from Startup Science um, and uh, I had a meeting with the founder of Startup Science a couple of weeks ago, and he was telling me he had been through, been through uh, 12 exits. So he's built and sold 12 companies. Wow. And so he, he and his co-founders went back and created a training program to take you to look, so you can learn all the stuff to go from creating a vision to exit. And so it's it's a really fantastic program, and we yeah we give everyone access to this for free at no 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 charge. So it's a valuable um, resource. And this is kind of a summary of what we do. We take people with ideas, and and we um, try to help teach them the best practices, and we provide some tools for them. And and then hope, we're hoping that they can get access to all these programs. And we actually provide a opportunity database that have, you know, a bunch of these programs in it so they can actually connect to them and take take advantage of them. These are some of our uh, mentors. Uh, um, they're, they're not all of them, but we do have uh, quite a few mentors with different expertise to kind of help you um, move move forward. But that's, that's basically it in a nutshell, uh, what we have, uh, Robert, and, and, and so we, we, we keep trying to grow and keep trying to partner with folks to kind of, you know, make things happen for founders. Awesome. Yeah, that's a wonderful, remarkable program. That's awesome. Yeah. Yes, I appreciate appreciate that. So um, I, so you did a good job in telling us about yourself. So we're, we're glad about that. And I will let the audience know we I'm going to try real hard to get you uh, from Atlanta down here to do a little uh, training workshop for Absolutely. us and yeah and get that take care but I, I wasn't sure do, do do you cover florida is there some other evangelists that cover florida no i cover i cover everything this is this would actually be a part of my uh rob talks dot cloud business my, my okay school. gotcha no problem no yes problem. i'm really all over the world just wherever okay you got that's me, that's that's me. Me. yeah yeah <laughs> so um so i'm i'm open to however you want to do it tonight we can chat or you can share some slides and Okay. But, I, but I know people want to hear about chat GPT. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll give a, I'll give a little, it, it, well, I'll give an introduction about chat GPT. Right. Okay. And, um, from there, I'll kind of go through some of the tools okay. and then, you know, we can kind of open up the floor and then I guess maybe towards the end, I can show you all how to uh, do some of these things called prompts, which is, oh. which is more than just, um, you know what's the capital of France, right? Yeah, yeah. It's more than stuff like that. It, it's going to help uh, your business owners tremendously, um, from creating business plans to email campaigns to even creating sales strategies and things of that nature. So I, I think yeah. that it will be really beneficial. 
for well, I, I do have a I do have a question for you because um, you, you know you, t- you you mentioned the word prompt and and I, and I've been noticing this this term prompt engineer mm-hmm. so it's like a new uh, uh, job role. Had you seen much on that? Yeah, actually, um, there are a lot of companies that are hiring for prompt engineers right now because a prompt is really all you're doing is you're feeding chat GPT something and you're expecting something back. Right. So mm-hmm. a simple prompt is what is the capital of France? Right. Mm-hmm. And chat GPT will respond. But when you get into prompt engineering, there's a way that you can ask chat GPT to do certain things for you in almost like a paragraph format or a list format. And it's going to take everything that you ask it to do and it's going to put it all together and it's going to throw it back at you. Like, say, for instance, um, if you want to write a blog, right, you can say write a blog on starting a business, which is fine. Right. But you can also say write a blog on starting an IT business in Pensacola, Florida, targeting this particular group in this particular area and um, utilizing the latest, you know, search engine optimization keywords. And it's going to take that and it's going to get pinpoint right down to what you ask it to do. So there's a there's a, a short, you know, way of doing prompts and then there's a long way. And so the prompt engineering is a long way. And that's really what a lot of companies, what from what I'm seeing, they're hiring people for because I don't think we've touched maybe 2% of what chat GPT can do. Wow. And um, this is really important, especially for our community as well, to okay. be uh, able to be ahead of the curve and understanding that, you know, the the literally chat GPT is your playground. You just have to figure out how to unlock it. Right. So um, there are prompts that have n- that not not all the prompts have been discovered. We're nowhere near having all the prompts being discovered or anything like that. I can't even say that. It's um, something that will ever be an end to. It's just an ever evolving product. Yes, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, well, I appreciate that an- answer. And and uh, if you ever come across um, kind of like a job description or a certification, in that please let us know so we can get people trained. Train that. Definitely, yeah. Because they're I hear they're paying three, four, five hundred thousand dollars a year for people to do that. Now I don't know how long. They're going to be paying people to do that for, but for right now, they're paying lots of money for that time. Wow. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. So, so I'm ready when you are. Okay. Great. So let me go ahead. I'm going to reshare my screen real quick. Okay. And um, what we're going to do is I'm just going to share some basics about Chat GPT. Okay. Um, because it that it, one of the things that I always find is that you know, first of all when you say chat GPT, everybody kind of looks at you kind of like, okay, what is this? Right. And then when you explain it to them, the next thing they think is, okay, I'm not going to have a job tomorrow. <laughs> no, <laughs> That's not what it is. All right. So let me, let me go over something real quick and I'm not going to go through this word and word, but word for word, but basically chat GPT is an AI language model. Okay. It's an AI language model and it stands for generative pre-trained transformer. So basically what it is, it's a very, very advanced chatbot. For example, you can go to almost any website now and you click a little bubble in the bottom of the right hand screen and there's a person that says, hi, can I help you? That's not a person. <laughs> that's a that's a bot, right? A chat bot that they have programmed to answer a certain amount of questions, right? But you already know that by interacting with the chat bot, sometimes it'll say, well, hold on. Let me get you to uh, a real person. For instance, uh, uh, last week I was flying to Miami. I had a speaking engagement in Miami and I was going into Florida. I mean, in Fort Lauderdale and all the flights were canceled. So uh, there was an area where I could in Delta app where I could text, you know, the the um, text an agent. Well, the first five minutes of me texting was a chat bot. It wasn't even a person. And then when it, you know, realized that it couldn't answer my my uh, question, then it flipped on over to an actual person. Right. So that's what we're getting. The thing about chat GPT, though, is that it generates human like texts and answers and that type of thing. It's based off of natural languages. So basically I don't have to try to 
uh, think and speak a, a, a certain way for it to understand what I'm saying. Because it's not only going to understand the words, but it's also going to understand the intent behind my words. Okay. So those are, uh, that's a couple of things about it. Also, um, the architecture, again, it's like a human like conversational context. It'll help you with different things. It'll help you build an amazing chat bot for your company. It'll help you do customer support. Um, and it has been large on, it has been trained on a large data set. Okay. Now, if you don't know what data set is for everybody that's out there, a data set is just basically a, for the basic, most simple, it is a spreadsheet full of names and addresses. We can use that as a data set, right? Say you all in Pensacola and I could go to probably the Chamber of Commerce and I can get a list of all the businesses that are in Pensacola, Florida, right? That would be a data set, okay? This, what makes this interesting is that the data set is the internet. So we think about this. The data set is the internet. So when we're not talking about a bunch of spreadsheets. We're talking about everything that has been created that lives on the internet. Now you have access to. All right. So it has been um, it has been around since 2021. Well, not 2021. Its language actually or understanding actually stops at 2021. Um, and they're you know they're making updates and things of that nature. So if you ask it like who won the NBA championship last year, it's not going to know, right? And it's going to tell you that it's not going to know, okay? But it has a wide range of topics on all kinds of things. You have people asking it, you know, when people first find out about ChatGPT, they might say, hey, tell me a joke. Okay, that's cool. You can say, tell me a joke. And it's going to tell you a joke. But after a while, you think that's the limitation. That's not the limitation. That's really only the beginning. OK, so I'm going to go over a few key features real quick. Um, and what we have here, your key features for business owners and for managers. I just kind of got a few because there's a lot of different features out there um, for customer support. Right. Chat GPT can be used to develop AI powered chatbots, virtual assistants. It can handle your customer inquiries. It can provide some instant support. Um, and all together, it can actually reduce the workload on any of your human agents. Uh, it can create content like blog posts, social media updates, product descriptions, marketing copy. Right. Um, it's going to save you time there. And again, you know, it is all about doing things in a way that it can just understand like your human context. Right. So um, it can summarize documents. Um it can generate answers for FAQs. It can build a knowledge base. It can do language translation. And the thing about it doing language translation is this. Language is from what we realize when we go to school and we learn Spanish or French or Japanese or whatever. We go over to another country. People can tell that we are not born in that particular country because of the dialect and because we're speaking like in a proper tone, right? Um, just like if somebody when we meet people who are not from the United States, right. And they're speaking English and there's, a, there's, there's different uh, words and, and groupings of words that they use that we may not be able to quite understand, or we can get the gist of it. And so we're able to carry the conversation, but we know they're not from the United States. The thing about chat GPT is this, it understands the intent behind your words. So if I was to write up something, right, it would take that and translate that with the proper intent and with the proper dialect, right? So it's not going, it's going to feel more genuine and it's going to feel more real to that person who's reading it uh, across the world in India or in um, some other part of the world, right? So that's another thing. Um, uh, it can help you create new products. It can help you create services. Again, you're brainstorming. You could do process automation, all these things here and more. If you have people that are looking for code, right, um, and trying to learn how to code, it can help you learn how to code, and it'll give you different um, different ideas in it's any kind of language, right? It can be Python, it can be C sharp, it can be C plus plus. Some I, I haven't gone as far back to see if it does things like Cobol and Fortran, but it probably does. So this is 
how powerful and how masterful chat GPT is. Okay. So that's it in a nutshell. Lloyd, do you have any questions for me before we kind of get into how to use chat GPT or anything like that? Well, uh, I appreciate that um, over, overview there. And I think you're definitely on the right track, you know, given that, that background and everything. So in the audience, feel free to chime in and um, post your questions. And, uh, and, and so one of your, one of your, uh, folks, he's uh, he's actually excited to to um, uh, um, hear what you're what you're saying. So that's pretty pretty neat. And this is what so Versailles got a question there. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. How does Chat GPT compare or compete with Google Bard? Well, you know that's something. Um, and I'm gonna be honest with you. I've been so entrenched on Chat GPT. In Google Bard, what came out maybe a month ago or something, I haven't gotten a chance to really dig deep into Google Bard. Um, I, if you stay connected with me on LinkedIn, I will definitely start doing that. But look, Google Bard is so new. Matter of fact, if you really think about it, I mean, Chat GPT is new, right? Like we first started hearing the buzz back in November when you know the wait list opened and, and everybody kind of like started jumping in there and still it's very 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 new so um so i haven't really gotten a chance i wish i could answer that better for you but i like to be honest you know to say i hadn't gotten there yet you know yes, yes. and carlos has a question Okay, so how can it help you out as a software developer? Well, there's a lot of different ways that it can help you out. Number one, it can improve your code, right? Um, for example, uh, I've done little tests. I haven't had it um, oh, review any of my code that I've written, but I've had it write code for me before. I've had it write code for a, uh, a chat bot, right? And I would say something to the point of, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, in Python, you know, show me how to create a chat bot, you know, and it's going to give you like the actual and we can actually look at it as a demonstration as well. So you can kind of see and it's going to give you actually a window kind of like they have on, I think, on the um, Jupyter Notebooks where you can kind of do a copy and paste and those types of things. But it'll help you customize your code as well. So what a lot of a lot of developers are doing, they're using it as a co-pilot. OK. And because they're using that as a co-pilot, when they, you know, need help with something, creating a function or creating a class or something like that, you can ask ChatGP to do it and it'll do it for you. You know, uh, if you want it to simplify it for you, it'll simplify it for you. You know, so those are just some of the things that 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 it can actually do. But we when we look at the um, when we look at uh the, uh, the sample that I give towards the end, we'll, we can probably look at one of those coding examples. As a matter of fact, you can you can give me something, right? And I'll drop it in chat GPT and we'll work on getting the right answer. Because sometimes it takes a little bit of tweaking, but when you understand how to ask it, that's when the power actually begins. So thank you. That's a wonderful question, Vercel. I'm sorry, Carlos and Vercel. Uh, Ronald, are there other competitors coming? I'm hearing that uh, I'm hearing that Amazon is working on something, uh, and Facebook is working on something, or Meta, excuse me, is working on something. But I, I don't know um, as of right now. Like I'm not, I'm not in the space where I'm getting like all of the head knowledge or anything like that. Um, but those were the, the rumblings that I've heard, and there are other companies out there as well. The thing that makes Chat GPT so um, so so strong is that uh, it was created. I think Microsoft partnered with OpenAI back in 2017, I believe it is. And from there, you know, they had been working together to uh, create this product and all of these different things with OpenAI. So, you know, if everybody, if you think about it, this took everybody by surprise, even the folks at Google. Because you remember um, when Microsoft integrated ChatGPT with Bing, right, and released that and kind of like went straight, straight at Google, right? Google didn't know what to do. So they, came, they had a first iteration, right? But when they had that first iteration or that first release, there was some issues with there was some question that it was asked and it got wrong. 
and it caused like a frenzy. And then they put everything on pause. And then now here recently, probably within the last 30 days or maybe 45 days, they actually finally re 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 released that product. So you could think of how advanced they are. Open AI is because they've been doing it for quite a while. Um, but there was something on, on um, I think it was on, uh, I can't remember the channel, but there was an interview somebody was having with uh, Google probably like a week ago, just talking about the things that they're doing as well. So it's a race. It's a race. Um, but right now, ChatGPT has really cornered everything that's out there. Any more questions? I think, I, I think we're good there. Okay. So you gonna what are you gonna do next? Here? Oh, okay. I, I thought you had a, I thought you had anything uh, some more things to go. So let's do this. If you are on your machine um, and you have not signed up with ChatGPT, um, maybe you want to pop open another window. Maybe you want to split your screen or something like that, and you might want to go ahead and um, and open. Uh, and open this up, right? So you have uh, the link chat.openai.com, right? And you can sign up with your email um, and they they will give you a free version. Now, the free version um, is very, very busy, right? And what I mean by that is the response time is kind of slow. Um, and sometimes, you know, you have to wait until traffic dies down. When it first came out, like from sun up to sundown, it was so many people on there and you would have to wait in order to get in to get your instance and all of that. But now they released a paid version. Paid version is $20 a month uh, and it's available all the time when the demand is high. You get a faster response speed and you have priority to access those new features. So. Uh, everybody that's on a free version, you have uh, you have um, uh, Chat GPT 3.5. Everybody that's on the uh, everybody that's on the uh, paid version actually has access to 3.5 and 4.0 as well. So that's um, uh, Ronald. That's a great question. That's actually how they make money. They might make money in other ways as well, but um, for right now, um, uh, that's probably that's, that's probably their bread and butter because you can imagine how many people are paying twenty dollars a month to get this. You know, I would I would definitely think you have over a million million people or two million people doing this right now, twenty dollars uh, a month. But it's probably even more than that. All right. So um, once you create that account, okay, then it's just going to give you a blank window and it's going to look something like this, okay. I'm just dropping this up here so you can see it. I'm not going to go through it. I got a little, I got something a little, um, um, uh, I got something a little installed on there from my browser, but you'll see where you can kind of select your model default legacy for in GPT.4. And that would be if you are, you know, if you have uh, the paid version, but I'm going to minimize that real quick and I'll get back to it. But that's, that's literally what it's going to open up to. And then you can begin. But what are you going to begin doing? Let's take a look. So prompts and queries, prompts and queries. Um, your basic prompts are things like, you know, tell me a joke, right? That's fine. Cool. Great. It'll tell you a joke, right? It might be like a dad joke, but it'll tell you a joke, right? What's the capital of France? Um, what's the weather like in New York today? That one's kind of tricky because you might need to do a little bit of uh, jailbreaking to actually get that because it won't necessarily tell you what the weather is today, but they have people that have already like jailbroken about this isn't that type of class, right? Uh, what's the best way to learn a new language? Okay. Those are basic prompts. Okay. Now advanced prompts, this one, look at this. I'm planning a trip to Japan next summer. Can you recommend some off the beaten places to visit and local experiences to try? Okay. So now we're getting into, um, the we're, we're training our mind now to ask it different questions, almost like when we would jump on Google or Bing and we would ask um, places to eat in Japan. Right. And it will just give you like 
a bunch of places to eat. Well, this is this is basically asking the same question, but this is in a conversational way, right? Another one, I'm developing a new product and need to conduct market research. Can you suggest some effective strategies and tools for gathering feedback and insights? Ah, now we're getting to something that is very, very detailed, right? Because what you're letting chat GPT know is a few things. It's that you're developing a new product, right? You need to do your market research. And because I'm doing that, I need some strategies and tools for gathering customer feedback and insights. That's a lot. You can't just type that in Google. That's just going to be like all over the place, right? But when you type that in the chat GPT, it's going to take that and it's going to give you some strategies and your tools for feedback insights. And it might give you a list of them, okay? So that's a more advanced prompt, okay? So you heard we were talking about prompts earlier. That's a more advanced prompt. Now, you can ask it, do different queries as well. Um, personal issues, right? Some people use it for psychology, right? Help me make a decision. Who do I need to go out with this weekend, right? I like this guy and I like that guy. This guy has this, that guy has that. I don't know. You know, so those are the things that some people do. Like they, they help, they ask it to make this. Now, I'm not advocating for that at all, but that's what some people do. And I'll just leave it at that, right? Um, you can ask it technical questions. So for instance, um, uh, there was a question asked, Carlos asked a question about being in helping him out as a software developer. You can ask it any type of question about any type of language you want to, and it'll help you out, right? It'll even write it for you if you want it to write something for you, right? Um, uh, you can even ask it opinionated questions. Oh, I misspelled opinionated, but you can ask it opinion question, opinionated questions. And what do you, what do you think about this? Right. And then basic general knowledge questions as well. Okay. So that's a, that's the, a, a, um, the, these prompts are going to be, uh, going to be diverse and they cover a range of topics that you might be interested in or learning about. Right. And so this is your basics of your prompts and your queries. But let's dig a little bit deeper because this is where the change actually starts to happen, okay? So first of all, when you're writing a prompt, okay, grab a screenshot of this or something. You want to make sure you're using clear and concise language that's easy for chat GPT to understand. That's easy for me and you to understand, right? Don't, you know, it says avoid using overly complex and ambiguous language and be as specific as possible. Right. If I'm trying to explain something to my eight year old daughter, I'm not going to use like a lot of different terms. She's going to she's going to blank out. Right. She's going to be like, I don't even know what this is. And she's going to probably go play Roblox or something. Right. But if I'm clear and I just say, hey, you know, Kay, can you do this for me? Can you show me this? She'll absolutely be able to do it. Right. Um so it should be have focus, right? So it should have a clear focus. So when you're typing in what you need to type in, making sure you're staying on track, making sure you have a clear focus on what you're trying to get in. And then uh, relevance, ensure that your prompts are relevant to the user and the conversation. Don't introduce other topics. Don't introduce other things. Stay focused on what's relevant, okay? So I'm gonna give you a couple examples on a good prompt and a bad prompt. Your good prompt is, can you provide a summary of main points from the article, which there may have been an article out there called The Benefits of Exercise? And so basically, ChatGPT is going to go out on the internet. It's going to find the benefits of our exercise, and it's going to give you a summary of what that is, right? That's wonderful. That's amazing. You can do that with a lot of, um, like with your emails and with stories. You can do that with a lot of different things, right? The bad prompt is, can you tell me about the world? Did, I mean, what do you want to know about the world? It's too general, right? You need to be focused on some things. And so that's an example of a good prompt and a bad prompt, all right? So, um, you know, there is, uh, we have those types of things. Charity, I could see someone doing a very specific job search on ChatGPT. Absolutely. Absolutely, Charity. You can actually do a job search. You can do a job search on a specific job, right? 
say you want to become, I don't know, a software developer, right? For a company, right? You can find, you can say, give me the job description for ABC company. And it's going to go to the job description as a software developer for that company, right? And it's going to give it to you. And then you can say, create a resume based off of this job description using my stats, right? So you can you can give it the years you've been on jobs and doing all these different things, and it'll create an entire resume. So when we're talking about making things faster for you, I know people that are writing business proposals that would take weeks at a time, right? There is taking literally 15, 20 seconds to be able to do that. I know people that are that uh, one, of my, one of my friends said last night, he said, what chat GPT is doing now, it takes away um, my feeling of not having the confidence when I'm creating a business proposal. Because when you're creating a a, um, a, um, a, a, a business proposal, right, uh, there's some things that you're not sure, like, you, did I forget this? Did I do this right? Did I do that right? But when you ask chat GP to do it, you have more of a confidence that it's actually going to do it the right way. Now, of course, Things aren't perfect, right? It's not a silver bullet, but you know you can go in and tweak. And we all know it's much better editing something than it is actually writing something from scratch. Because when you're writing something from scratch, if you ain't feeling it, you just ain't feeling it. You know what I mean? So, um, but those are examples of good and bad prompts. So Carlos says you asked <laughs> about Batman versus Captain America. <laughs> yeah, and it'll give you it, it'll give you an answer, right? Right. Quinn, I use it for a bio cover, a bio and cover letter. Exactly, exactly. A uh, letter of recommendation. You know, people always want a letter of recommendation for something, right? So, do a do a letter of recommendation for somebody. Um, it's it, it's it's really your co-pilot. Okay. Um, I like to say this, and think about this, right? If you had the opportunity to sit and spend time with the smartest person in the world, what would you ask them? Would you ask them what the capital of France is? Would you ask them to tell you a joke? Or would you ask them to figure, say, how can I make my business go up, right? How can I handle this situation? How can I do that? Those are the things that you're going to start asking this person because you know that they'll they'll be able to provide the answer. Remember, there was a meme um, uh, probably within the last couple of years talking about would you take five hundred thousand dollars or would you take a lunch with Jay Z? Right. Well, first of all, let's move the five hundred thousand dollars out the way because you know not many people are just going to receive five hundred thousand dollars. But if you had the opportunity to sit across from Jay Z, are you going to ask Jay Z? what the capital of France is? Absolutely not. You're going to ask Jay-Z how he started these companies, you know, all these different things, right? You might ask him about music. You might ask him, I don't know, even you, you, you might ask him about a ton of different things, right? So we need to sit and we need to expand our thinking. We need to expand our thinking because so many times, so many people are, are really t- scratching the surface. So with that said, let me get into some advanced features. And um, uh, Lloyd, if you want to stop me at any time, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, if you have keep on going, we 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 want to learn. We want to learn. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. So let's talk about in advanced features. There's a ton of different advanced features, but we're gonna give. I'm gonna give you one that is kind of prevalent that you'll be able to find out a lot about. It is called the act prompt. Right? You're telling Chat GPT to assume a persona or a role, okay? So this is going to help you out when you might need help with something. So say, for instance, you are a, you're trying to create a website, right? And you're trying to create a website on selling bicycles, okay? Now, you can find somebody, and I know because I've done web development for plenty of years, and I was able to create a website like amazing, right? I was able to do a website. But one thing I could not do was I could not write the content, okay? I was not a writer. I am not a writer. My wife is a writer. She does that type of thing. I don't, right? And people would ask me to write content. And I would literally say, no, 
you need to hire somebody or find somebody to write your content. Does this sound familiar to anybody that's out there? It probably does. Okay. So with chat GPT, you can say, okay, um, I have a website uh, selling bikes. You know, what should I put on my about page? Or can you write my about page for me? Can you write some engaging material about my new product that I just came out, you know, that I just put out or something like that? So there's different things, but you can say act as a content developer or a content writer, and it will now assume that persona and it will write that based off of what content writers do. Okay. Um, so, uh, Again, this this way they have it here. They say, uh, I want you to act as a travel agent, right? Can you recommend some des some vacation destinations based on my preferences, right? And it might ask you what your preferences are, okay? And we're going to see this. I, mean, I got some prompts up here that we're going to throw out there, and you're going to see all of this in action, okay? So that's the act prompt. Now, we do the act prompt. That's cool, Okay couple more things I want to do before we get into this, all right? Um, you can ask it to adjust the length of your response, okay? Give me three paragraphs of a recommendation letter, okay? It'll give you three paragraphs. And if it doesn't give you three paragraphs, uh, then um, <laughs> uh, ask it to rewrite it and give you three paragraphs, right? Um, yeah, another thing, you can control the level of creativity, okay? Here's a good example. Uh, how can I explain this to a specific a specific person? Like, for example, they say the average um, understanding that a person has when they're reading a book is based off of an eighth grade language, right? So eighth grade, we'll basically say for the United States, eighth grade English, right? Don't go giving me these 12, 12th grade and college words or nothing like that because your bestsellers are always written on an eighth grade level, okay? So if you have a high concept that you want to be able to explain to somebody, you can say, um, can you write this so an eighth grader will understand it? Or can you write this so a first grader can understand it, right? You might have to kind of try to explain something to your kids. You can be able to do that, right? You can provide feedback. And you can do you like its response. If you don't like its response, I need you to write it again. And it's going to write it again, okay? So as it does that, it starts to learn and then it will improve its responses. Uh, Lloyd, yes, act as a CTO as well. Sure, you can do act as a CTO. And you could say based off of the CTO, I don't, you know, um, based off of the CTO, um, um, Maybe you can say, give me the job description of a CTO. You can say, um, um, uh, create a, a SWOT analysis for um, a CTO. Um, you can say, um, uh, uh, create, uh, maybe maybe there's some reports that a CTO likes or maybe um, those types of things, right? You can be able to feed that. So, and the reason why I'm, I'm kind of pulling stuff out is because it's literally just that, like, you have to sit and you have to think about what you're going to ask. Like if you're going to ask the CTO something, what are you going to ask the CTO, right? Or what are you? What does the CTO need, right? Act as a CTO, then give what the CTO is would be looking for. Okay, so if you want to throw that in the chat, we can go ahead and do a test real quick. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna throw these links here in the. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to throw these links in here for you. That'll help you out along the way as well. Um, and these are just some free resources that I have uh, found to be useful to learning as well. So um, that is Awesome GPT Prompts. And this other one is 100 Best Chat GPT Prompts to Power Your Workflow. These are just, um, you're welcome. These are, let's see, is this the right one? Yep. The, this is it right here. Copy and paste. Now you're going to have to, because ChatGPT is so new, you're obviously going to have to do 
um, some digging and things of that nature, but this is going to give you uh, a lot of what you need, okay? Now, I guess you could say the moment that we're all been waiting for, right? Um, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take a look at chat GPT and how it works. So first of all, let me go to my default and I'm actually going to zoom this in a little bit so you'll be able to see it. You see, I've got all kinds of uh, stuff up here that I, that I always ask it, right? But anyhow, um, let's see, uh, Quinn, let's see if a writer wanted a book created based around a concept who owns the work or publishing. That is a good question. Because that is something that not has not necessarily been crossed yet, right? So, um, uh, and you know, I'm kind of like sitting back eating the popcorn, trying to figure that one out too. But here's what I say: you create a book based off of a specific topic. Okay, now, do not take what you put in there copy it into Word, and send it off to publishing, right? Absolutely not. Basically because, number one, the, that question of who owns the work or who owns the publishing, we don't know what the end is going to look like with something like that, right? You know, as things come out, as things come out, you know, we, we always have to cross these bridges when we get there, right? But what I suggest you do is this, with everything that you write as chat GPT as your co-pilot. What does that mean? Giving you a starting template, letting you be able to utilize your own creativity, right? And based off of that, write your book, that's a go, you know, because you're utilizing your own creativity. But what I do not advocate is for anybody to say, write me a book on this, and then that's it, because you don't know what's going to happen on the other end, okay? Okay. But you as a creative, Quinn can only be Quinn. Quinn, nobody can be Quinn. Quinn can only be Quinn. So the way you read stuff and the way you might see something that ChatGPT wrote and you might be like, uh, I think I can probably explain it a little bit better being more creative. Maybe you're just going to add more adjectives or something like that, right? But then it's going to start to become yours, okay? So that's one thing that I definitely, I tell people all the time because we haven't, you know, we haven't really crossed that yet, or I haven't seen anything like that yet. All right. So um, let's see. Let's come up with a, let's come up with a mission statement. Let's come up with a mission statement. Okay. Um, and I'm going to drop this here in the chat. Well, I'm going to drop it here on chat in chat GPT. All right. So this is something called a um, this is something called one of your advanced prompts, right? Your advanced prompt. So this is some this is a pre-made prompt that I was able to find online. OK. And so this one is based off of a mission statement. OK. Now, you see these areas right here. I'm just going to do one or one or two of these because I know we might be getting short on time. But I want you, somebody, just to throw me. You're welcome, Quinn. Uh, I want somebody just to throw me. I'm going to highlight this. So basically, it says we're a certain industry startup looking for a mission statement that resonates with our target audience. Can you help us generate a statement that accurately conveys our unique selling point and reflects our commitment to three different goals? Okay. First question I'm asking you, give me an industry. Just give me an industry. So is that the industry, the creative, creative, creative industry? Creative what? Creative design. That sounds good. Okay. The creative design, right? Um, we're creative, we are the creative design startup. Looking for a, oops, looking for a mission statement that resonates with our, what would the target audience be for, uh, um, a, a creative design startup?
Somebody throw me something. Target audience. We will say, all right, you got five seconds. I'll come up with one if you don't have it. Video uh, gamers. Video <laughs> games. Gamers. Okay. That resonates with our video gamers. All right. Can you help us generate a statement that uh, that accurately conveys our, what is the unique selling point of these video gamers? Uh, wait, selling point, selling point. Um, what an African thing. I'm doing uh, a, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm doing a, uh, what's her name uh, coming on next week? Crystal Logan. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, help us generate something that ad that conveys our African theme. And it reflects our three our, our commitments to what goals? What are goals that we are committed to as these um video gamers um that are uh part of this African theme? Let's see. Um commitment to fun. Okay. What do you say? Culture. Yeah, that could be. Culture and um fun, culture and What would be something video gamers? Um, I used to play video games all the time. Why can't I think of this right now? Oh, oh artistic. Um, artistry. Boom. All right. Boom. So, sure, here's a possible mission statement for your creative design startup that incorporates their African theme, commitment to fun, culture, artistry, and resonates with video game. Our mission is to bring the vibrant spirits of African culture to the gaming world through our fun and immersive designs. We are dedicated to celebrating the richness and diversity of African art, history, and folklore, and we strive to create visually stunning and engaging gaming experiences that capture the imagination of players. With a deep commitment to artistry and creativity, we aim to push the boundaries of what is possible in gaming and inspire a new generation of gamers to embrace the beauty and wonder of Africa. Wow. Fantastic. <laughs> wow. Now, if you don't have, I know you have a lot of startups in here. If you don't have a, I'm, matter of fact, I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste this prompt in here right now. <laughs> Grab that prompt. Take you, oh, it says it's larger than 280 characters. Um, I'm going to have to do something to, to for, for your folks to be able to grab it. But um, that would be something that you can create, right? Um, for that. Any other, let's, let's do one other prompt. Let's do one other, other prompt. Uh, Lloyd, what'd you think about that one? That was fantastic. Yeah. Anybody, um, let's see what we've got here. I'm trying to think of something that I can give that's concise. Cause I got a lot of prompts here. I got prompts on like negotiating contracts. I got some on managing tickets and, but I, I'm, those are going to get very, very, um, long there. So, Let's see if I can find something. Uh, let's see. This one could be good. Now, if you're a math person, this, I'm just going to drop this in here. If you're a math person, like for financials and stuff like that, right, this would be a good one for you. How to generate a certain year financial projection for a company by analyzing the number of years of financial statements and assuming and uh, uh, our revenue growth uh, growth rate of whatever the growth rate is. These are things you can also feed and upload things for it to be able to analyze as well. So you can actually do these types of prompts too. We can also do something like this. Um, create a business plan, right? Um And this will be the last one I do before we end. Can you put together a business plan for my industry outlining our mission, our core values, and SWOT analysis? 
Additionally, I would like you to include your target market, your sales forecast, and an overview of management and team and organization structure. Now, if you don't have a business plan, right? And you you have you know what industry you're going to be in, you know your mission statement, you know your core values, you have a SWOT analysis, and then you can put in you can also copy and paste in your target markets, your sales forecast, and all of that. It will create an entire business plan for you. That's great. That's great. <laughs> yeah. So so for startups especially, like when you're talking about sales forecasting. When you're talking about conducting market research, when you're talking about uh, identifying growth opportunities as well, um, uh, generating an elevator pitch, right? Um, let's see what else do we have here. Yeah, I, I'm going to create something and I'll, I'll make this. I'll make this public because this is just kind of all over the place. I, I was hoping I could actually copy and paste. This yeah, I, I, I can. Like if you email me something, I can yeah. you know, make sure everybody has access to it. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Well, that actually brings everything to a close. Does anybody have any questions, anything, um, anything you, you know, you, 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 you want to talk about or anything like that? Or Lloyd, do you have anything, you know, do you want, do we need to do more Q and A or, or what? You think yeah, I, I actually have a question. So, Okay. I, I have some AI software that that generates functions, mm -hmm. and 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 um, and so what I'm wanting is maybe wanting like I said if I can generate a, a function which is an artificial neural network, but it, it may do it in JavaScript or C or some language. And is it possible to ask Chat GPT to actually um, um, build an interface for it? Yeah, you can. Um, that's a good question. So let's go back to Chat GPT real quick. Let's let's go ahead and let's let's do it right now. How about that? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> let's do it right now. So um, here, I asked it to do something recently, but what do you what do you, what exactly are you wanting? Uh, I'll type it in here. What exactly are you um, wanting for it to create? Like what language and what do you want? Job, JavaScript and and so. Um, so like we can do a simple example. Let's say I have a, a function that does the exclusive R uh, function. Can you write me a a, um, a a a web interface for that or a GUI or something? I guess that's what I'm trying trying to say. Can you write a web interface for? Did you say exclusive R? Yeah. No, no, or so like the, it's X O R exclusive R. That's okay. what, yeah. I've been out of the development phase for a long time. So <laughs> X O R. Yeah, this would be like a two input, one output exclusive R function. Okay, let's see. I might ask for more information. Let's see. Oh yeah, there it goes. Boom. Yep. And then it says this web interface provides two input fields for the binary values to be XOR together. When the user clicks the submit problem, the XOR function is called in JavaScript, which converts the input values to binary, performs XOR operation, and converts the result back to binary and displays the result in an alert box. And so basically what you go up here and do, you just hit copy code, you drop that in your IDE, and you're off to the races. Yeah, but so, but can I actually place a function in there and, and, and said and ask it to create a, a a web interface for it? Um, the code for the 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 function and ask it to do. I don't I don't know, but that's that's kind of what the the, the you know. I'm sure the, you can. Um, okay. The, would you be able to give me an example if you want me uh, where you want? Well, that's not that's not necessary for you to demonstrate right now. But what okay. what I was thinking about was, and I haven't tried it yet, but I I'll take the the code for um, so I, what I would do a prompt. I said I, I have the following um, function in JavaScript. Can can you actually write me a web interface for it? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It it'll it will do something like that. I haven't done that, but yeah, I know that it will do that for you. It yeah. will it, when you feed it, you can feed it information, and it'll actually take what you input 
and actually create it for you. This would be an example right here for you. So yeah. Yeah, if you wanted to do something that you already had like values for, yeah. Yeah, so I literally, I guess in that case, I could actually re replace the XR function and paste my code in there. Yeah. You know, yeah, to do yeah. that. This would be a good boilerplate template, you know, for you. But yeah, okay. that's, how, that's how easy it would be. Um, so I uh, see there's a question. Let's see. Here. There. see oh, what was it and what was your journey? What was what and what was my journey? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before you go, can you talk about your app? You grew to 100K. Oh, OK, cool. Well, uh, I used to work at an organization um, World Changers Church International, <clears throat> Pastor Creflo Dollar. Um, I was part of that church for a number of years, right? And I worked in their IT department. And so back in 2012, um, before anybody had any apps or anything like that, you know, I've always been that person that has always been just in that spot, right? So back in 2012, um, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me. So back in 2012, I said it would be really cool if this ministry had an app because no churches had apps at the time. Right. And so I created a dummy uh, and I took it to um, Pastor Dollar's son. Right. And I showed it to him and I was like, hey, I created an app for the ministry. What do you think? And then about two weeks later, I got a phone call and I got the the, 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 the proposal say, what do you think about working for us? I was like, cool, no problem. So I come in and I create the app, right? Um, but it wasn't just a basic app. It was an app that a lot of you, if you're, if you, if I see there's some former members up here too, but um, it wasn't just a basic app. You could watch the stream on it, which was good, but it also had a quiz feature. And based off of the quiz feature, you, um, you would, you um, would, answer the quiz, answer the questions on the quiz, and you could post your score to Facebook, right? Nobody was doing that. So when I started doing that, um, you know, from top to bottom, I did the app development. I did the publishing to the app store and all of those different things. I got together with the marketing department. We got people to download and it just spread like wildfire. And people loved it. People got connected, started streaming and all those different things. And now they're probably in their fourth iteration of that app. But um, but generally the first I did the first iteration of it and it just got to be it got to be a lot of work. And it was only for iOS. I didn't know Android. I didn't know it was before cross platform was even a thing. Right. So that's how that thing got started. I did the first iteration of it. Then they had a second, third. I think they're on the fourth right now. But yeah, so if you see, you know, if you go to CreflodollarMinistries.com, you'll be able to, or I mean, excuse me, dot org. Um, or if you go to the app store, you'll probably be able to see, you know, what version it's on. But I was the creator of that first version. And we had about a hundred and so thousand across the world. It wasn't even just the United States. You will see people in Africa and all these different things. Question, Charity. Hey, Charity. Really thinking about my nine-year-old and how I know his education is about to level up. Thinking about how the school systems will incorporate this as well because it's inevitable. Absolutely, it is inevitable. I don't know how the, the school systems are going to do, but what I will ask you to do is for your nine-year-old, what you may want to do is look for a local code academy like CodeWiz, okay? Uh, CodeWiz is a Black-owned code academy by um, this wonderful lady named Ruth Agbaji. Um, she is um, uh, she is an amazing person. She actually used to work at Microsoft year, several years ago, and she is placing CodeWiz around the world, and that is really going to be helping us uh, and as a community be able to really run that race, right? So that's not even waiting for the schools get your kids in something like that, like CodeWiz, and I promise you, they'll be ahead. They'll be light year, years ahead of anybody when they take this back to school. Fantastic. All righty. So um, any other um, parting um, comments, um, uh, Robert? Um, no, I, I, 
I'm good. I'm just reading some of these comments. Thank you very much, Marcel. Thank you very much, Quinn. Thank you very much, Charity. Thank you, everybody, for asking your questions. Uh, one one thing I, I would like for you all to do, I guess, is to um, feel free to contact me on, um, oh, well, that's robtops.cloud, right? That's my email address as well, right? Um, and um, uh, RJ McNair on LinkedIn, okay? Look up, look me up. You'll see me. I got on a blue suit, you know, a blue blazer, white shirt. Um, look me up on LinkedIn. Matter of fact, I'll drop my LinkedIn um, uh, information in here. How about that? That's great, yeah. And connect with me on LinkedIn if you have questions, because really what I'm doing is I'm going to create a I'm going to create a chat GPT course um, because it's something that I, I know that we need. And and, you know, it's still it's still so new, folks. So like like it's still very new. So um, as I learn, I will share. <laughs> OK, so as I learn, I will share. But um if you need me for anything, if you need me to come speak anywhere, um, go ahead and go to Rob Talks to Cloud or go ahead and hit me up on LinkedIn. You know, i will definitely work it around my work schedule, but I would love to be a part of anything that you all have going down in Pensacola or anywhere for that matter. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. Man. Yeah, this has been really um, informative and helpful. Um, <clears throat> and I think uh, we all can leverage this tool as to help us be more productive and be more competitive. I'm definitely excited about it. Yeah, awesome. Uh, the last thing uh, I'm going to leave you with is this quote that I always tell all of my classes, right? Winners are not people who never fall, but people who never quit, okay? Um, these are going to be some challenging times because uh, – because you're going to see a shift in a lot of different things, right? A lot of people think that chat GPT is going to take their job and all these types of things. You're just going to alter the way that you do business, right? As things come and go, things will change. Years ago, when the automobile first came out, there were articles written that the auto automobile would never replace the horse, right? Like adamant people. And now who do you find riding a horse down the highway? Absolutely nobody. Well, I'm, I'm in, I, in Decatur, Georgia, you will find <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, outside of that, you know what I mean? It, it Basically, what I'm saying is things change, right? And so what ends up happening is start to learn this. Get really good at prompt engineering. Buy different tools. Get on LinkedIn learning. Read and listen about this stuff. Get ahead of the game because when i'm telling you it's going to make your life so much easier as a business owner as a as starting a business all of that um educationally code everything you can think of but you got to be able to open your mind and sit at the keyboard and just try it out converse with it it's not gonna bite i promise you and that's it that's all from me <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on and sharing this uh, latest technology stuff. And we look forward to collaborating in the future and all that good stuff. Everyone, we'll be back on next week with Crystal Logan and looking forward for that talk. And, yeah, just take advantage of all the things we're offering. We're, we're glad to be here to support the, the founder community. Thanks a lot. And we'll see you all uh, next week.